If you're looking for a perfect everyday bag that is light, durable, versatile, and hip for the summer, don't miss out on the newest addition to the Knack Bag family of products, the Knack Sling Bag. Yes, in a season full of ugly bucket hats, bootleg t-shirts, and board shorts, the Knack Sling Bag will make you the talk of the beach. It's everything you need in a fanny pack, but improved in a million different ways. It's lightweight, endlessly expandable, and stylish as all get out. Yes, indeed, the Knack Sling Bag is the perfect companion for every adventure. Check out the link in the description to order yours with free shipping on all orders. Thanks to our friends at Knack for sponsoring this episode. If you get a Knack bag, don't forget to post it on social and tag us at ETB Sports. We want to see you enjoying your Knack bag. This is Empty the Bench with Tom Albano. Coming up at 9 o'clock, the newest game show, Who's on Whose Genitals? Only on Fox. Nick Morgison. Terry Irving is a tool, okay? Kyrie Irving has no business in this league anymore. First of all, he's got F.U. upon F.U. upon F.U. upon F.U. upon F.U. money. And Nick Federa. He probably still believes that the universe is being carried by goats on chariots. Some kind of cosmic animal is being dra is dragging the universe forward into the future. Empty the bench starts now Kyrie Irving is now above LeBron James on my big board right now well considering that's how we enter this episode this is going to be quite an interesting one as I welcome everybody to episode 142 of Empty the Bench Tom Albano here along with Nick for Nick Morgan and Nick Federa and gentlemen this is honestly this should be the view of this episode because <laughs> this is going to be the Nick Morgison show. It is? Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't get the memo. You're right. gonna be doing a lot of You're gonna be doing a lot of talking today. Let's let's put it that way. Well, you're gonna be doing a lot of talking and a lot of I'm sure most of that's gonna be raging considering the circumstances of today's episode. Uh I don't we're going to do the episode rundown right now, but I just want to take a little hold here and go through several of the smaller stories that we have. Although, before we do that, I do want to thank uh, the sponsor of today's episode, Knack, as usual. We're talking about these great Knack bags, although we also do have promoting the Knack Sling Bag. Order yours right now. Click on the Knack, this Knack link in the description below. Get yours with free shipping. Little you can have all you can have these, which are you know the old style, handy style for those of us who are traveling to and from the office every day. And then you do have the Nax Sling bag, which you saw earlier, a little light, a little more uh flexible. Uh okay, let's get into this show. So we're gonna have a very big NBA free agency episode, but we do have we do have some Baker talk, we do have talk about my favorite part of the 4th of July, the hot dog eating contest. <laughs> and we do have uh, this little story about LIV golf, but big news is free agency. And let me leave it to you like this. Last week, we were here and we left off with Kyrie Irving signing back with the Nets, opting in, taking the $36.5 million option that final year. <laughs> One, well... You were saying, you know, we were saying, oh, he's probably done. But then, oh, you guys are saying, oh, but he's an idiot because he would be an idiot if he didn't take the money. Well, we found out the reason. The next day, Kevin Durant makes a request to management, right, to Joe Asai himself. He wants out of Brooklyn. And then a follow-up report from Woj says that Irving and Durant are still interested in playing together, but it will not be for the Brooklyn Nets. So the sound that you have just heard in the background is the anvil, the thousand pound anvil that has just dropped upon the uh, the Barclays Center. I think it's fair to say that the Durant and Kyrie experiment has come to a an ending un not unlike a killing spree where you're basically just left with nothing but a pile of corpses and a whole lot of wasted money. And of course, Nick Morgison is just so nonplussed. He he's just he's just he's just he he's just 
I don't even know where you are. Are, are you even here He's right now? He's not on this earth. So here's basic. So we are going to get into all the different little discussions, all the rumors about where each guy, Durant and uh, Kyrie, respectively, could end up. However, within the last 24 hours on the Tuesday edition of the Pat McAfee show, Shams made an appearance on the show <laughs> and says, quote, I'm co directly quoting. The Nets are making moves in preparation as if they're bringing Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving back next season. Which goes to a point that actually you said the other day, Nick Morgison, just because they have put the request in does not mean they are forced to trade. Okay, I got to pull myself together. All right. Yeah, how do you want to start this? Because yeah, I yeah, think we need, to, we need to start with your thoughts. Where are you at, Mr. Nets? So, NBA. so number one, people need to realize KD Kevin Durant is under contract for the next four years with the Brooklyn Nets, supposedly making one hundred and ninety eight million dollars. OK, that's number one. Number two, what most people who are call themselves NBA fans need to realize when you're under a four year contract, what does that mean? It's going to be very hard. You to, are obligated uh, to finish that contract. Well. I'm not according to KD, but <laughs> my point is Kevin Durant is technically under a four-year contract with the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets are doing this out of the fate complete of their hearts, okay? They're, everyone seems like they want to satisfy KD. I don't get this. So the Warriors satisfied KD when he wanted to leave OKC because OKC was a nightmare, when the first technical big three, if you want to call it, of Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and KD were together, and they could never get over the hump, when this is what proves that big threes don't work, unless you're LeBron James and you lead the Heat, and you've figured it out that way. Mm, I think the difference you have there with about LeBron and the Heat, and I think we've talked about this before, and I even kind of insinuated it on the minute when it comes to the Warriors of this year who won a championship without uh, KD is that team, that Warriors team, those Heat teams, they had role players. It wasn't just about the big threes themselves. It was mostly about them, but they had role players who did their part to help elevate that team. There's one big difference with Golden State. So Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, the difference between that, if you want to call it a big three, and let's say Miami or the Celtics or any other big three you want to say that's won a, a championship, the Warriors were a natural big three. Those three were out of the draft. Steph was out of the draft. Draymond was out of the draft. Clay was out of the draft. The Celtics, you want to go, KG was from Minnesota via trade. Ray Allen was via trade. Okay? And the only one that really technically was Paul, was, uh, Paul Pierce, who was at, in Boston. OK, so technically the Warriors are the only one who did it in a homegrown big three fashion. That's fair, too. That's fair. And they won the championship without Durant. That that first championship was without Durant. Then Durant came after the three one choke and they ended up winning two more titles. Uh, all right. But just Kevin Durant, he has a four year contract and you've actually been seeing a lot of memes going around about because you mentioned LeBron before that the difference is LeBron even though he also has the reputation of jumping around from team at least LeBron finishes out his contracts LeBron at least won and was a leader even though people want to give him crap for how he handles himself in the fourth quarter but KD is not a leader he's a follower everywhere he goes first of all when KD went to Golden State that's it was embarrassing. Well, it was no, but right. But at the same time, it was the embarrassment of riches in Golden State. Okay. They could have won. They still could have won. Now, everyone's saying, now I agree with what some people are saying that they wouldn't have even uh, competed in the Cleveland series if they didn't have KD. That's all true. But at the same time, they all could have won without him. That's my point. And, and it, 
Meanwhile, as a Knicks fan, I'm just sitting here laughing my big fat ass oh, off. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Don't get the we're gonna get to a story about the Knicks that you're not yeah, gonna Yeah, Nick, I wouldn't be laughing so much yet. But let me let me get back to this. Let so, me Kevin, enjoy this, damn it. Well, you're not going to when you find out what the Knicks story is. My oh, point God. is <laughs> that KD requests the trade after Kyrie opts in. We talked about this last week for $37 million. Because, and again, I will say this one more time. If you thought he was not going to opt in for $37 million, you are the dumbest NBA fan I've ever seen in my life. And you should, re I'm going to revoke your NBA fandom card if you thought he wasn't going to opt in. He's going to come over your house and literally take it from you and just cut it up with a pair of shearing scissors. And I'm being well, serious. Well, but the Nets now do have the challenge of trying to rid themselves of Kyrie, but also dealing with that $37 million. Well, no, he's going to get traded. We all know this for a fact. And from the reports that are being said, he's going to get traded also like KD is. But, <clears throat> excuse me, what people don't realize, this is a very complicated situation trying to create trades for KD and Kyrie. And by the way, let me just dispel one thing. They're not getting traded together. It's not going to happen. The, the trade is going to be too complicated <clears throat> to get them together in a trade. Well, that leads to the point that several analysts have been making and maybe kind of obvious if you think about who KD is, his prestige in the league, and the contract, is that whoever is going to be trading for KD will be giving the Nets... The, the, the expectation is it is going to be something of historic proportion in terms of picks and players. We're talking about... And we, we're going to talk about another trade that happened, which is ridiculous, by the way. They're talking about it's even bigger than that. But my point is, you're, you're talking about 8 to 10 picks... A couple, at least one all star player that's going to have to go back. A franchise is basically going to have to say, Here's my franchise, and we'll take KD back. Like, like you remember what uh, I think it was when the Clippers traded for Paul George and all they gave, gave up. Think for all you out there, think more than that. Think more than that. Think more. Uh, there's a ton of trades I can throw out. Think more than the, than the James Harden deal that the Nets made. And they That's traded too. That's true too. They traded seven picks for James Harden. People don't remember that because they want to forget that James Harden was in a net uniform. But if that oh, got well, seven well, picks, right? It, basically, if that got seven picks, if the PG three thir the PG thirteen price was what it was, if uh, what what oh the one trade we're going to talk about still later on, like. If, considering all of that, imagine what the Nets are going to get for KD. It's going to be unbelievable, plus whatever they're going to get for Kyrie. Now, <laughs> excuse me, the other idiots out there who call themselves NBA fans are saying, well, it's not a big deal. Just trade them to the highest bidder. It's not that simple. It's not that simple because there are NBA rules that need to be followed and for some reason, I think the NBA is the most complicated when it comes to salary and trade demands. And the Suns, everybody, he wants to go to the Suns. Well, yeah, okay. that, that makes uh, sense. Okay, so do you want to, I'd say, because now we have two different parts to this, two follow-up parts to this story. Do we want to do the Durant part first or the Kyrie part first? Let's do the Durant first because this is, okay. the, dominoes so, are, the dominoes are going to fall right after Durant gets traded. Okay, so <laughs> Kevin Durant has been, let's say, we made the comparison with LeBron. Well, let's say he's been trying to put the LeBron hat on in that, you know what we say about LeBron guys on the show? He's the coach. He's the general manager. He is every he's the guy selling cotton candy. candy. He's the peanut exactly. vendor. Exactly. Well, Durant is trying to be that way. And Durant is trying to, at the same time of demanding a trade, making requests in possible trades. For instance... With the trade, there was a rumor about, yes, the Suns. There was a rumor about the Heat. And with the Heat rumor, Durant uh, supposedly has made the demand that Jimmy Butler, Bamadeo, and Kyle Lowry all must still be in Miami when he is there. There is also a, a report coming from Mark Spears that says, and co conveniently we brought up Golden State before, that the Warriors might actually be interested in a reunion. So well, where do we start with this, Mr. NBA? Well, first of all, first of all, that Mark, uh, that Mark Spears report. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Mm -hmm. 
what are you saying? He's lying or uh, Kevin Durant? Are you kidding me, Mark Spears? You're going to put your credibility on the line as an ESPN NBA reporter, and you're going to come out and say that the Warriors are interested in KD after the way he left Golden State? Are you kidding me? I mean, stranger things have happened. I, I agree with Nick. Stranger things have happened. Nick, the percentage is zero. It's zero. It's never going to happen. Here's what I want to know, though. See, normally, he wouldn't be in a position to demand anybody of anything. He wouldn't even be in the position to demand everyone drop their pants, much less <laughs> where he would do, where he would like to play for an NBA team. But seeing as how this league is a player-focused league, take that statement how you will. No, it is. It is. What, what percentage of what he's asking is actually going to get done? Who hops to if he actually says something? Uh, it's, well, it's tough. It's tough. So if we're going to start on the Golden State one, you have to consider this. And I think I mentioned this in a minute, that uh, Kevin Durant's contract and what he'll be making per year, it's going to be about 30-ish, 35-ish. 44. Percent. Wait, 44. No, no, no. I'm talking about That's percentage. The, <clears throat> oh, but that, oh, okay. But I was going to say his salary for the upcoming season alone is 44. 44 mil, yes. So that's about 30-ish, 35-ish percentage. I, I said the exact number in a minute, but... It, it's, it, over, it's, it's over a third. It's over, Right. It's about a third, if not more, of the league cap, which means they would have to make some moves. And I, again, something I echoed just a few minutes ago, something that I echoed in, minutes, that, in a minute. That means ha maybe having to give up Thompson. That means having to give up those role players. Jordan Poole. Like Jordan Poole, who's going to be as who is a very highly, you know, touted uh, NBA player on the show as being, uh, you know, from me, from you, Nick Morgan is going to, as a player who's going to be developing into a player of the future. He's like, the next. He's the next big guy because their big three is getting old. He's going to be the next one that's going to really lead the Golden Golden State Warriors into the future. Correct. But you get my point, guys, in that they have won the. They won it in an incredible fashion this year and proved that they aren't dead. And they did that without KD. They don't need KD. So why would they give up all that helped lead them there to this championship? Just to just to cause the drama show that, like that Nick Federer, you mentioned before, ended in the first place? Well, yeah. Here's the thing. As you said, and I've said this many times, the Warriors do not need KD. It's an embarrassment of riches all over again. If KD ends up back in a Warriors uniform, you might as well just not play. I'll turn it around, though. KD needs the Warriors. No, he doesn't. I, I, I think he does. because you I know think what? he does. Because... You know what this is? I'll tell you what this is. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, hang on. Uh, okay. I'll tell you what this is. This is him ring chasing. He, he, went, he made his way to Brooklyn saying... I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy. I want to prove I don't need these guys. I there want to be the guy. Go, and then all of a sudden, uh, flat, uh, four years later, they put, the Nets paid him a year where in, where he essentially rehabbed. They paid for his rehabilitation. It's and not now, all of a sudden, four years later, he's saying, "Oh, sorry, I don't want to be the good. I, I don't want to be the even, guy anymore. Sorry." Even if you're not gonna, even if you're gonna refuse the ring chasing, Mark Nick Morgison. I think these two years, and I don't think you can you can deny it anymore. Have proven he can't be the number one. He is a oh, number two. First of all, he doesn't I, want to be the number one. That's, that's what not I, true. That's what that, that I disagree. Of course, he wants to be the number one. He wants to be responsible for a championship. But again, if you want to be, you pretty much are putting the team on your back already. Yeah, if but you Nick, want to be the guy, stay in Brooklyn. No. I know. I, I no. I agree, but it's just a matter of. KD has just – he is funny enough that the Nets had Harden because they're so far in that same class. I mean, KD has one championship, so KD's in a bigger class than Harden. Yeah, but first of all, James Harden was never a number one, and we and you've said right. that for a I, while. I, I agree. I, that's why I said I take that back. KD is in a higher class than Harden. But still, KD, I don't know if he really is a number – yes, he did win those two finals MVPs in Golden State. But yeah, but again, Steph Curry was the leader. That, that's Steph Curry's team. Now – the one thing I want to say, Nick, is the reason it's if if he really wanted to ring chase, he should have stayed in Golden State if he wanted to ring chase, not go to Brooklyn and try to take a team that was nowhere 
and I'm a Nets fan saying this, nowhere near competing for a title. Well, you 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 missed the you missed the part of what I said though. I said he wanted to prove he didn't need those other guys. But, but no, but you used the term ring chase. If he really wanted to ring chase, he should have stayed in Golden State. Okay, now I get what you're saying. His Nick, priorities have I, shifted. But but I agree with Nick Federer that he wanted to prove that he could win without those guys. And okay, so but far. Look at the track record, guys. Every time he left the team, now obviously when you go to okay, a team that I has, know, okay, I understand your, your side against of the ring chasing mark, but he still wanted to prove that he could be the leader of a team. Now let's let's be clear about something. How much do we want to fault the Nets of this in their acquisitions? Because there is one element that people aren't talking about that we do kind of have to make mention of. Is the signing of those three, Harden, Kyrie, Durant, came in a time where it was actually pre-COVID. It was nine months before the COVID pandemic really hit. You, you want my real answer? I would have never have signed Kyrie. It's easy for you to say that now. No. I, 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 no, 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 no. Time out. I Time actually, out. No, I actually agree with Nick Morgison. I actually agree with Nick Morgison. I thought Kyrie was bad, and I think he – but on that note – I don't think you fault the Nets completely for those signings because I think Kyrie ultimately did this team in by his refusel to get the COVID vaccine. Yeah. I, to, for him to just say, eh, I don't feel like it. Oh, as, wait a minute. As if he's a 10-year-old refusing to eat his vegetables. Wait a minute. Before COVID, he was shitting out games due to mental health situations. Yes, yes. So, so, he, was having, so, so no. he was having mental health issues beforehand of COVID. Okay, yes. So on that, maybe it was a bad move by the Nets. But sitting up because you refuse to get vaccinated because the, you think the vaccine is somehow going to make you magnetic Nick, or, 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 or turn you into a stag. Nick, I, I, Nick, we're not arguing that. You're, you're right in every way, shape, or form that because he refused the vaccine, he screwed over the Brooklyn Nets. We're not disagreeing with that. What I'm what I'm disagreeing with is that the only reason net fans were happy that Kyrie was in a net uniform is because it brought Kevin Durant to Brooklyn. But I mean, you get you, with 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 flat man over there, you get what you pay for. Okay, how many times are you going to fall on that short? I get it. I understand. We all know Kyrie is a is a you know what I don't I'm not even going to say because I, I could say a million words about Kyrie. My point is that. If Ky this would have happened in New York with the Knicks, if Kyrie went to the Knicks, we'd be talking about KD and Kyrie having a blow up in New York. I I still agree, and I agree on that too. But but I know hindsight is kind of twenty twenty. But then here's the question. But the that brings about the question of after the eighteen nineteen season, what should the Nets have done? Because they cleared a whole bunch of cap space just to land those three. Oh. First of all, that's not just the Nets. Any team clears cap space. Do I have to remind you again of the other side of New York and as many times as they've cleared cap space? Okay, okay, th okay, then I'll throw another question out there. Do you think if K if Kyrie, I mean, if KD was going to go wherever Kyrie went, could you have said not this wouldn't have just happened in New York? Do you think this would have happened anywhere then? Yes. Absolutely. It would have happened everywhere. Maybe, I mean, if Kyrie was delusional and said Sacramento was the most amount of money offered, then KD wouldn't have listened. But <clears throat> my point is, this, I, like I said last episode, and you cringed when I said it, I'm going to say it again. KD was on Kyrie's dick the whole time. Okay? He was. But uh, uh, again, but not only ha has your window for competing been, not only has the door shut, You've slammed the you slammed your dick in the door. That, okay. that, that's exactly the problem here. But my point is, the Nets looked, are uh, they're going to have to wipe the slate clean. They can't they can't continue to compete with what they have without Durant and Kyrie. Of course, and that's why there's going to be a massive haul in return for KD when he gets traded. That's the only reason why they're trying to get him traded now because they want the massive haul. If they waited a year and KD gets hurt again, the value is out the window. So you're pushing the lever and using the ejector seat. Duh. Yes. Well, you have no other choice. It, no, but did we not say at the start when they first got those guys in mid 2019, we said they only had two or three years to get a championship. And guess what? It's been three years. No championship. Well, 
I would blame this more on Kyrie than I would on KD. KD's been out there the whole time when Kyrie's the team on his back like Atlas. So. Yes, I agree. Yes, I, I, I do agree. Again, not all of the Nets' fault, like I said before. But the reality is, as Nick Videra said, the window is shut now. Now well, it's back and it to the drawing shut, board. And it has shut on your penis. Oh, I'm not disagreeing with you. Their championship window is closed, and it might not open for another five to seven years, in my opinion. They might not make a run again, depending on if they get an all-star, which they're going to. Now, the interesting name I would look at is possibly a Donovan Mitchell in a trade that would involve KD. If you can get a Donovan Mitchell to come to Brooklyn, then you might be able to... O- tiny open that window yeah but would utah really do that for kd i i don't know if they do that i honestly don't know (laughs) i'm talking well first of all utah wouldn't be able to do it straight they just couldn't afford it it would have to come in a three or four team deal now that's another thing people are not realizing most teams are not going to be able to make this trade straight up because they can't afford the $44 million salary. Because, again, what people don't realize in NBA trades, unlike any other sport, you have to match the salaries to make it work. And, and again, the Nets, aren't, the Nets and the other teams aren't only dealing with the Kevin Durant at $44 million, but you also have the $37 million of Kyrie Irving. <laughs> Granted, it's not, as you said, it's very unlikely that it's going to be in the same, same deal. But still, that's, but still, you do the math. 44 and 37. So that's 91 million, 91 million dollars. We're talking about a lot of money. Let's put it that way. And I want to go back to something we started to say before, which was Miami and Phoenix. Cause obviously Kevin Durant, that is ring chasing. That is definitely ring chasing. Cause those two teams were at the top of the NBA last season. Okay. Okay. But is K, but does KD have any right to say, you know, Oh, Bam has to stay and Butler has to stay and Lowry has to. I don't well, think he has that right. Of course not. He doesn't have that right. The only reason he gets those rights is because he's KD. He's the ultimate star in the NBA. Him and but LeBron again, James. But again, you have to deal with that contract and the supposed trade that was floated around between Miami and Brooklyn. You were mentioning the limits and league rules and everything wouldn't have worked because giving Bam over, giving Bam over. Well, okay. So let me explain that to everybody just so they understand. So the reason, first of all, that Bam could not be included, and that's who the Nets wanted, by the way. They wanted Bam out of bio in any trade. But because the Nets have Ben Simmons on the roster, who they traded for from Philly in the James Harden deal, you can't have two guys on your roster that you trade for that are on the rookie extension. So that's number one. So Miami is out. Yeah, Miami has to be out because then your only logical choices that Brooklyn would want are either Butler or Lowry. And you and again, KD has said, no, they have to stay, which what the hell would you give up then if you're the Heat? That's not going to work. And, and Heat fans are going to get mad at me. They don't have anything that the Nets want. Nothing. Oh, oh they have stuff. Again, they have stuff that Nets, the Nets want, but uh, we got to please KD. First of all, KD needs to put a sock in it and shut the fuck up. I'm so tired of KD acting like he's the big man on campus and that he deserves every freaking (laughs) thing. Like he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth for crying out loud. And he, first of all, the, one of the reasons, and I, I, I'm going to compare, you're going to think this is a wacky comparison. KD and Carmelo, when they both showed up in New York are acting the same way. They are. They Remember got more. They the Knicks got more out of Melo than they did out of than they did out of KD. <laughs> I disagree. Disagree a thousand percent. Really? I do because KD got to a conference finals. Melo never got to a conference finals. Yeah, but he. But yeah, but he spent he spent a lot more time there. At least you could tell he was dedicated. And first of all, the KD could lead a team better by himself than Melo could. Mm. But that's the. Yeah. I'm talking about from a, a production standpoint. I, know, I actually, I, uh, I could actually see that. No, I, no, I could see that. But it, it's just, it's frustrating. And so the Heat are out. The other team that was mentioned was Phoenix. Now here's the problem with Phoenix. Okay, I would not start a discussion with Phoenix without Devin Booker. And again, I don't think that Phoenix is going to be willing to do that. 
Well, and now, and actually, the Suns just took them out of that because he just signed a Supermax extension with the Suns, and you can't trade somebody on a Supermax uh, roll, extension roll for a year. And as I was just going to say, and the NBA rule, <laughs> NBA rules hit. Which is fine because the NBA and the and the MVPA all have to agree to these rules. But I don't see how these two teams could work. It doesn't work. At the rate that they're going, I'm sorry, no, I was just thinking of like quality NBA stars <laughs> and teams and the stuff and KDs, you know, demand. I, I don't know how they're gonna get any deal to work. You can't. Now you're gonna get a desperate team eventually. I could see a team like Philly. Maybe getting involved. They have some players, and they've and the Nets and Phillies already have history with trading. They actually have some good young players that would fit with the Nets. Um, what was the other team I was going to say? Uh, Toronto. Toronto was another one. Toronto is another team that I have heard. Now, uh, yeah, uh, Pascal Siakam would be a good player in Brooklyn. He's a, he would be a, a, a piece to build around. I could see. However, I was going to say, however, if it's a team like Toronto or Philadelphia you know, who may not have those same kind of players as the ones we just mentioned, that's going to be a lot of first and second round. I mean, first round picks and swap picks. We're talking, like I said, we're talking about like eight to 12 picks at least. And you're going to have to, you're, someone's going to have to give up their star. Someone who wants four years of KD, which is not bad. Now that's in the Nets leverage because he is technically under contract for four years. Not technically, he is under contract for four years. So that's actually making the trade leverage higher for the Nets because they technically are not losing him to free agency. They're just not. All right. What do you, well, what do you I, do? I, I, I do have a question, but in order to do that, let, let's get to the other half. So let's do the Kyrie half. So a couple of rumors have also circulated around Kyrie Irving. One in particular is that the Lakers might be interested. I mean, the Lakers and Nets might be in an act uh, in negotiations for a let's call it a super deal in which the Nets would receive this big Russell Westbrook contract and Los Angeles would take on Kyrie Irving's contract. The reason for that, well, one person that we have mentioned before, one LeBron James, who won a championship with Kyrie Irving in Cleveland. This is exactly what I thought. And I, you guys can go back and uh, you can be my witness. I said this months ago, even that LeBron wants Kyrie back because they played in Cleveland. They won a championship. I said this. We can go back in the records and well, find is Kyrie really going to be the answer. I, mean, I didn't say I, it was, I didn't say I it was guess, the answer. I guess he thinks that he's the Kyrie whisperer, <laughs> that he's just able to get something out of Kyrie Irving. That We've other seen teams cannot. We've seen LeBron play with crazy players before, and it works out. Now, Kyrie's in a much different place mentally than he was way back when, when <clears throat> he was competing for contracts and for money. And like I said in the intro, Kyrie has FU upon FU upon FU upon FU upon FU money. Okay? So, to be quite honest, the league should just label him damaged goods and let him walk away. The... Uh Again, uh, what, but if you think, LeBron but you really wants team, this to happen, it's going to happen. But but you know a team is going to get desperate, like you just mentioned about KD. And actually, it's a little bit worse with Kyrie because Kyrie is on a walk year. Right. He... <laughs> so the value is going to be a, smaller than for someone like KD who's under contract for four years. And but the, the Lakers, but yeah, of course, the, uh, because the Lakers, of course, can't do anything in this free agency and trading period, unless they deal with this Westbrook contract, that's actually worse than Kyrie Irving's. The The Lakers are so far over the cap. They're going to have to take out 10 mortgages to cover it. And I'm not joking about that. <laughs> they're, they're over the cap. They're, they're maxed out. So the only way that they can do anything is by making trades and making the money work. And again, if they do this, do this little super deal, and Nets take on all of that Westbrook money, imagine what in picks they, they would get. So imagine what they would get with Durant and what they would get with Kyrie combined. They, they would basically have the draft boards for the next three or four years. Well, they're, they're talking going to end up with that a version of that anyway, but it's just a matter of who's going to pony it up. Now, the rumors were that the Lakers would have to pony up two first-round picks. Now, if that's the case, yes, go ahead, do it. If you're going to get two first-round picks... Because the Lakers are going to be bad. 
And I don't care with LeBron and AD. First of all, AD's got No, I agree. I agree. I could see the the Nets having two top 15s, if not two top 10s next year. I think it's going to be more than that, depending on what the trades are and who it's for. Um, I don't see like a, a low market team making the trade for KD because, again, you have to be able to afford that $200 million contract. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this trade here with Kyrie, the Lakers are the only one who've ponied up and or, or rumoredly ponied up so far for Kyrie. Now, it would have been a much different situation if he opted out. Every team, almost every team, would be in on Kyrie, including your New York Knicks. Mm. Okay, so should we go to the D? <laughs> well, no, because we're I not there yet. A, we're, we're not, not there yet. One, we're not there yet. Two, I do have a question. Okay. Let's say worst comes to worst, however, and like the story from Shams on the Fat McAfee show mentioned, <laughs> they aren't able to find trade partners, and at the start of the 22-23 season, Durant and Kyrie are still on the Nets. Can they do what we've been talking about with Deshaun and Baker and basically say, fuck you, we're not playing and refuse to play? The NBA, it's a little bit different just because they will fine you and all that stuff. Now, it's a little different in the NFL because they actually have to prove that they're sitting out and doing all that stuff and they have to figure out if whatnot. The NBA, if you sit out, like your contract could get voided. Your contract could be over. If you refuse to play and you break the rules, but considering KD and Kyrie star power, they may not mind that. <laughs> First of all, KD's made enough money. Kyrie's made enough money, but that's yeah. my point. They, they may be willing. Like we said with Le'Veon Bell a few years ago to take that hit just to get out of their contracts. I mean, look at Antonio Brown. He did it also, but my point, <clears throat> and there's a lot of reports because the, and I, you're going to hate these words, but the NBA CBA is coming up soon. Again, and yeah. one of the talks they're talking about is putting a rule in place that when you sign a four year contract, you can't ask out because out of after year one, you can't do it. There needs to be a rule in place. You're screwing the team that signed you. You're screwing the team that signed you. But uh, again, that would fundamentally change what the NBA is now. I mean. We've, we've said multiple times, even on even as we're doing this right now, we've said it's it, the NBA is a player focused league. Yeah, but Nick, Nick, if you sign someone like KD to four years, two hundred million dollars, you know, I agree with you. I, I'm I'm just I, I I just wonder whether the teams will have the stones to agree to that language being in the CBA. They may not have a choice because you're costing the the league money by well, doing I, these things. Let me ask you then, Mister NBA. Let me ask you then, considering the, you know, the relationship between those, between those two sides best and considering this potential rule in place, do you see a lockout coming? It's too soon to predict the lockout. I don't know when the CBA is up. I'll, I'll... I, I just, I just asked that because yeah. I don't really see the NBA and the NBA NBPA, you know, clashing like we do MLB and MLBPA. Yeah. So I can't really see any sort of lockout. And again, I think both sides are focused on players first, as we mentioned. So I, I, I can't see it. So not, the, that I can't, not that I can't see that rule happening. I just can't see some sort of damage, damaging lockout. So the, so the NBA uh, CBA is up after the 2023, 2024 season. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I'm honestly not worried about a lockout. I wouldn't be it. I mean, it's a problem. These guys sign massive contracts. We just saw, and we haven't even talked about NBA free agency because of all this BS with KD and Kyrie. And we're seeing, we're, we're seeing all these massive contracts for $220 million being signed. How, if you had to put a percentage on it, how many of these guys do you think are going to be in their uniforms by the end of it? Uh, probably 40%. I was going to say 30. It's going to be under 50%. Just because all these different teams that have signed their max players, they're going to want out if they're not winning. It's plain and simple. Or the teams are going to have to work around some sort of cap issue because, you know, the, the other sports leagues, unlike Major League Baseball, actually do have a salary cap in place. 
MLB is a whole different issue just because they just yeah. spend upon spend upon spend or they Bobby Bonilla or Freddie Freeman it where they just keep pushing the money out until it's uh, in the oblivion of 50 years away from now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. In, the NBA, in the NBA, you can't do that. There's no deferment. So, you know, it kind of makes you pine for the days of Jordan where he might have been a psycho, but he didn't want to go anywhere just, else until they made him leave. First of all, if Jordan was in the league today, he'd be demanding a lot more than this. <laughs> Imagine a player of jo if, of Jordan's caliber demanding and what he would command in terms of picks and money. It would be something else, now, wouldn't it? <laughs> it okay. would be. First, first order of business, I want Scottie Pippen killed. <laughs> oh, wow. he, pretty much, he pretty much did. <laughs> and then Scottie Pippen, who now works for ESPN, essentially went after him when the whole uh what was the name of that series that came out the on last the dance so when the last dance came out scotty basically killed mj because michael jordan was a freaking psycho all right but the difference between like say a michael jordan a lebron or other stars mj backed up his craziness with winning you can't uh, tell me what the argument is nick that's no, he no, won there is no argument that's what i'm saying all right, uh, let's talk about a couple more uh, free agency moves. Let's uh, actually hold on. But sorry, sorry. Let's start with this one. Let's start with this one because this one was another was another big one. Rudy Gobert being traded from the Jazz. We just mentioned the Jazz and possibly moving on from Donovan Mitchell. They did move on from Rudy Gobert, no. trading him to the Timberwolves. Wait a minute, is it G O E B R uh, B E R T or G O B E R? It's uh, the first D is not there. Don't worry. I'm usually the one who makes the misspellings. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's okay. um, that happens. But, but yeah, they did. Yeah, they did trade him. My mouth. I, I hope. I hope he didn't touch any microphones on the way there. Yeah. Let's just let's just hope they have. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. Maybe, maybe some hazmat suits they could put him in. <laughs> so my nice, mouth. Nice pair of rubber gloves. My jaw hit the ground when this trade was announced because. So the Timberwolves, now I get why they did it, because now you have uh, uh, K.A.T., Carl Anthony Towns, and uh, Rudy Gobert. Now, usually it's not two big men who team up to be on a team. That was kind of confusing to me. But Minnesota is a massive contender now in a big way. Oh, the, yeah, the balance. The balance. <laughs> and, 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 but I don't understand why Utah thought that this was a good idea. Because one, they couldn't afford both guys. They just they can't. It, it, they have two big guys that they can't afford them. And two, Rudy Gobert is a headache and an ego guy in the locker room. Ugh, why does it always seem though? Every time we talk about the NBA, it's always somebody's ego. Now, Donovan Mitchell is a way better. My, off, my God, think player. this was a group therapy session for Bond villains, for God's <laughs> sake. It is. It, that's what it feels like. Um, but. Like I said, Donovan Mitchell is a thousand times the offensive player that Rudy Gobert is. Now, I know he won Defensive Player of the Year, and he blocks shots and all that stuff, but he's not an offensive player. I don't understand this haul that Utah, I mean, that uh, Minnesota gave up to Utah to get Rudy Gobert. Just look at the list, and they even gave up the number 22 overall pick they had in the draft this year. And look at the amount of picks. So at a certain amount, so a certain amount of time, I, I think it's pretty obvious that crazy is going around in the NF in, in the in the NBA because craziness. The, yeah, because because either owners have lost their minds, players have lost their minds, or maybe it's a combination of both. No, well, it's, it, it, in the NBA, first of all, it's different than the NFL. The NBA, most of the league competes, except for teams like maybe Sacramento. <laughs> well, sometimes Sacramento thinks it can compete. Sacramento, Charlotte, those teams down in the lower end, they can't compete. They just have Sacramento to trying to compete at this stage is me coming on this podcast and saying, hey, I'm off to climb a mountain now. Well, I, I, I would say you could climb a mountain better than Sacramento competing. Also, also, don't don't hear have Michael Jordan hear this podcast when you say it's Charlotte and his, which is his team and not competing. Come on. Are we really 
are we really going to bow to the guy who said Republicans don't wear shoes he's, or buy shoes? Republicans <laughs> buy shoes too. He said, no, 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 but he's going to take that personally and you're going to see a very ridiculous trade. Well, at least you're going not... to you're gonna see Charlotte trade for gay day. <laughs> I, the day that that happens, I will go climb. I will go climb Mount Everest myself. Watch, oh watch, you'll, watch! You'll go downstairs now, and your pets will be dead, and there'll be several basketballs <laughs> thrown through your window. All I can say no, is, no, no, wait, wait, Michael. I hope you're listening to this. If you are listening to this, please go after KD, please. It'll never happen. Wow. It'll it'll never happen. Wow. <laughs> I, I will talk, talk my... about an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. <laughs> I will climb Mount Everest if KD gets traded to Charlotte. I'm holding that to you. I'm holding that to you now. I'm holding that on you. I, uh, oh my! Oh my God! It's the, just... the reason I could be that delusional is because it's never going to happen. I keep saying stranger things have happened. Charlotte, I Nick. <laughs> I I doubt it too, but I I want it to happen now, just so I can just laugh. just for the comedy of it. This trade is just to go back to this for a second. This trade is insane. Now, Rudy Gobert, it's the you know what everyone's gonna say. Oh, it's the sexy thing. There's two big names in Minnesota, and people are right. Minnesota is not an NBA free agent destination. Okay, mm-hmm. so this is the only way that they could get players to come to Minnesota. Now, by the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Minnesota is a great sports city. Okay, it's a great sports city and uh, and and state, but people just don't want to be there in the NBA. I mean, I feel bad for uh, Patrick Beverly who keeps moving teams. <laughs> Talk about a guy who uh, keeps making the rounds for his mouth. <laughs> oh my god! But this trade is insane. This trade is absolutely insane. The Jazz made out on this deal in every way, shape, or form. All right, let's talk about some more NBA free agency news, notes, trades. I mean... I'll give you one. I'll give you one. Zion Williamson? Yeah. How the hell did Zion Williamson... So, I understand Zion's potential. I understand all the hype around him and his star power. But no, no, no. Hear, Hear me out. But after all the games that he has missed... In fact, he didn't play one game this whole year, and he's nope. getting the supermax. I guess they are terrified of having, uh, considering how excited everybody in New Orleans was when he was drafted. I guess they're terrified of the fan response. I guess oh. are, no. I guess no. I guess they're terrified of not having any star power. Don't get me it's, wrong. It's the, it's the Pelicans, for God's sake. Yeah, but they if actually have. If it wasn't in New Orleans, it would basically be Siberia. No. Nick, I, I don't agree with that. They actually have some good young players, and eventually in the next couple of years, they will make a run. But I don't know if I would sink or kick that money to Zion Williamson at this point with the possibility of $231 million on a rookie Supermax extension. I, would, I wouldn't have done that. Shit. Holy and by shit. the way, you would think that the Pelicans, now it didn't happen when they were called the Pelicans, but you would think that they would learn from a certain situation with an initials of AD who happens to be in LA. Uh, yes, Anthony Davis. You would think they would learn from the possible situation. First, well, first of all, the Pelicans could not afford it. So that's why he ended up getting traded to LA. But you would think they would learn that big men don't make it, they get hurt a lot. Now you're giving him the possibility of $230 million? Don't get me wrong. He had one of the biggest viral moments in a Duke uniform when his shoe basically exploded, and he almost had a lawsuit on his hands. I'm, but you're the one who's always saying, you know, the NBA is a star-focused league. It, of I course mean, it need, is. You need stars, and I, I guess they're, they're saying that, you know, Zion Williamson still is a name. I beg to differ. I would say that Zion is actually not a star. In my book, in Ooh. he has the talent to be. Has he proved it yet, Nick? He's been hurt. Uh, uh, am I the one who paid him? No, but I'm asking you a question. How can someone be a star if he hasn't proved it on the court? Do you know his name? Name recognition means butt kiss. Okay, it means it's nothing. Really, it means more than you think it does. I think it does mean a little more. Go ask in, Greg in, Oden. In, in a player, in a player-driven league, I think so. 
Let me ask you a question. Greg Odin was the number one overall pick. He was supposed to be the next big Shaq. Okay. What happened to him? He got hurt. Never okay, the same wait, I guess the Pelicans just believe they can still work with something with Zion. But I'd be careful with that term star because star means, and Stephen A. Smith said this way back in the day when he got into a fight with Skip Bayless on first take, when they were talking about whether Kobe Bryant was box office. It was one of the most viral moments on Twitter and social media. And Skip would argue that he's not box office because of off the court, not on the court, on the court, one of the greatest players of all time. But Kobe wasn't box office off the court. Well, that's well, that's just Skip Bayless being his uh, his contrarian self. No, 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 no. But I, you have to be box office off You're, the court and on the court to be considered a box office player. Okay, <sighs> Zion is box office off the court, not on the court. Most of his attention is off the court. What about John Wall? Let's talk about that deal. Oy. Now we're talking about going a complete 180 here. John Wall signed a two-year contract with the Clippers. Well, or it's probably a year plus an option. Which Why is do the Clippers need John Wall? Let me ask They you. don't. They don't need John Wall. But the Clippers basically got him for zilch, basically a player minimum, <coughs> because the Rockets are paying that insane, massive buyout because he was making like 40 something million dollars. By the way, he made a hundred and twenty three million dollars in like three seasons doing nothing. Okay. John Wall, I'm I still believe there is some ability left in that body, but it's not the John Wall that we saw come out of college. It's not the same. The Clippers don't need him. First of all, he's gonna be fighting for the ball with Kawhi and PG 13. So he's not going to touch that ball. You have two ball hogs on that team. John Wall could have, and I'll throw a, a, a crazy team out there, the Celtics. The Celtics would have been a great place for John Wall. Eh. The Lakers would have been a better place for John Wall. <laughs> would, Lebr would LeBron really want John Wall on the team, though? If he was a role player and he could help win a title, yes. Memphis would have been a better team for John Wall. I, I no, I get your argument. I agree. That's why I asked the question. Why, why do the Clippers need John Wall? But because the Clippers are now pulling the embarrassment of riches theory all over again. But the difference between, as I say, embarrassment of riches of a Golden State, Golden State had come off a seventy-two win record-breaking season, so they kind of had to make the move. Right. I know. My no, I agree with you. The Clippers have not exactly been there they have taken a dive and honestly any any connection with the clippers has taken a dive he's taken the, the team has taken a dive john wall's career has it's over it's a bust rocked completely i'd even say Kawhi and pg-13 have both taken dives yeah but at least Kawhi won a title P pg-13 yeah. is a bust until he wins a title because everyone had pg Ooh. well because pg-13 everyone said like oh he's one of the top guys in the nba he's a star he was a bust with the Pacers. He was a bust with OKC. More okay. than more than James Harden. I would say they're I, both. I, on the, I, 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 I would say they're both on the same playing field as being a bust. I don't think so because I think because I think Harden, you know, tried to be a number one down in Houston and just constantly couldn't play up to the pressure. Because I think he Houston could have done something, but. <laughs> He just couldn't perform. Yeah, but I would say PG-13 is a bust now because he's got Kawhi, and they're not winning. They're not winning. And they have a bunch of role players on the Clippers, and they're not winning. This team is getting outshined by a, by a team across the way with LeBron James, who hasn't been competitive in three years. And the Clippers have made the playoffs. It's almost like they're invisible. All right, let's talk about this next thing because we're about to approach one whole hour of NBA talk. Ooh, okay. So the Knicks, Nick Federa uh, was not told of this before he came in here. The Knicks are apparently under investigation by the NBA for a tamping <laughs> as a result of this Jalen Brunson signing. <coughs> yeah, this, 
I, I, well, actually, Nick, to be fair, I kind of found this out a little, like a few hours ago. But so the Knicks are facing tampering charges. <laughs> Nick is going to lose his mind. His eyes are going to pop out of his sight. Oh, boy. <laughs> for So the Knicks are facing tampering charges for Jalen Brunson signing. Now, from what I heard, they, we heard about this hours before the Mavs were about to have a meeting that the contract was already technically agreed to. Now, again, I need to explain tampering because there are people on social media who don't understand what the word tampering means. Is this a call out of a particular person? <laughs> well, no, I would never be yeah. for this person. Stephen a. <laughs> well, Stephen A included. But... <laughs> so, yeah, it's him, but it's not just him. So the way t the way tampering works, the person who holds the bird rights, the team, has the right to have a conversation with their free agent star. OK, so. The Knicks apparently were having conversations with Jalen Brunson before the Mavs even got to their meeting. So here's the other issue, though, and I'll let you say something. Tom. His father is on the Knicks coaching staff. So, so just, how could tampering not happen? Go ahead. Can I, can I make my argument now? Yeah. yeah make your okay. argument. Nine months ago. We had a little incident. We mentioned Kyle Lowry before. Had a little incident with the Heat and one with the Bulls involving Lonzo Ball in which both of those teams were under investigation for tampering. And to your credit, Nick Borgeson, it was proven that both of those teams had faced tampering. Now, I, I had a look to see what penalty was issued. Both teams were only penalized a second rounder. Which is ridiculous when, in terms, those were large contracts. Okay. But the Knicks should not face anything more than a second round pick. Now, actually, the difference between the Miami situation is that was a trade. Actually, the, that was okay, a trade. I don't care. Tampering is tampering, is it not? True. But I'm if just saying that I, th there's a difference between a sign and trade and an actual free agency tampering. Well, <laughs> because if you're, if you're going to penal, if you're going to do something ridiculous like penalize the Knicks a first round <clears> pick. <throat> then the NBA needs to come together and we need to have a conversation about tampering because, again, we mentioned that it is a players-only league. And guess what? In the players-only league, we have had a number of times on this show have it, we've had to ask ourselves, isn't this kind of tampering? But because the NBA is a player's first league, they kind of – players and agents are able to get away. Well, it seems like, at least in my opinion, they're able to get a little away with more. All right, you're making the argument that I was about to make. So tampering, and people need to realize this, tampering happens all the time, okay? Tampering, technically, tampering is when you talk to another player on another team and you discuss the ideas of playing for that team. Okay, that's I think tampering. By the strictest, you know, definition. <laughs> LeBron James should have been thrown in jail by now. LeBron should have been thrown for tampering years ago, but because I LeBron, mean, if, if we're being, if we're being honest with ourselves, right? LeBron should have been thrown in tampering jail over a decade ago for the amount of rumors and speculation that he was having with Miami. Okay. All this, but, you know, all of, all of this, you know what this is doing to me? This is literally making my ears bleed. <laughs> Go ahead, so, Tom. No, I was going to say, okay, so fine. But then if this is the case, the Knicks should get no more than what the Heat and Bulls got, which is they should give up a second round pick. That's it. Fair. But at the same time, I actually think that in free agency, tampering is worse than it comes to a sign and trade. But if that's going to be the case, if you're going to make the Knicks pay more, then you have to start enforcing more, which means the I NBA agree with would you. Have, but that means then the NBA would have to become a little less of a player's first league. The players would have to cede a little power. Well, I, I don't know if it has to do with receding on power. I think it has to do with when you put rules in play and you have a CBA in place. Now, this doesn't you just have go to it. follow the rules. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my no. Now you you it's could like say they haven't thought this shit through. 
But you could say this for any league. This is not just the NBA. You could say this for all professional sports, that there's an issue with following the CBA. But I agree with the Mavs that there's, quote, frustration because the deal was technically agreed to before Jalen Brunson walked into a meeting with the Mavs. That can't happen. And again, with social media, with social media, it makes it worse. But again, with the history of the NBA and tampering, fine. But then the Knicks should only give up a second round pick. And if that's the case, I think teams are fine with a little tampering. Because and that's the issue, too. I'm glad you brought that up as well. <clears throat> that because the penalties are not strict, these the teams are willing to... Hey, well, guess what? Adam Silver is only uh, penalizing us a second I, overall I, draft pick. Right. Well, I'm asked, I'm telling you this because guess what? And ho I hope you don't deny this. If it was the other way around, if Brunson was going to be in a meeting with the Knicks and the Mavericks swooped up and signed him, the, then the Mavericks would go, oh, man, it doesn't really matter. They wouldn't be the ones crying. Um, That's debatable, actually. No, debatable? Yeah, it, is deb it, it is debatable because technically – Tampering does not determine based on the size of the market. It's all the same. Tampering doesn't have an, a, a money amount or a size of market. But let's be real. But let's be real. Does Brunson deserve all of this money? No. This no. is spending more. On, this is the Knicks spending A level money on a B level talent. Well, Again. actually, actually, <laughs> and actually. that is why it's making my ears bleed because all of that money and all of this trouble for Jalen Brunson. Now Jalen Brunson may turn out to be good, and I may just eat my words like but so many is, guys. This is same as it ever was, Knicks. Wait a minute. You're spending Wait. money, but what on him? I'm about to make the Mavs fans blood blood boil because technically the Knicks spent less than what the Mavs were offering and still got them. Okay. So I so I guess he really, really wanted to come to the Knicks, which Well, no, first of all, Nick, you're telling me that no a player really wants to come to the Knicks, Nick. No, he doesn't. I come mean on, if, they, Nick. if the he took less money to go to the Knicks. Who? Is that what you just said? He took less money to go to the to go to the Knicks. That's reportedly what the Mavs were going to offer, like four to five million dollars more total. But come on, Nick, he wants to be in New York, where all the marketing and all the sponsors are. Why do you think KD came to Brooklyn? Now I understand that Kyrie and they were teaming up. He was coming for the marketing and the deals and the big time in New York. If you are looking at a basketball for at, at these both of these basketball franchises like you would uh one of those viewfinders that we used to use when we were kids where oh. you would click it and then the we and then the paper wheel oh, you put a quarter in it view master if you're looking at it from a view master perspective right. oh look oh look it's a basketball franchise but take the view master off your eyes and look at it i mean really look at it you're seeing that hey that's not a basketball franchise it's a fucking tire fire <laughs> But and Nick, you just proved my point again that he was coming to New York for the money. View master, view you know, master. Nick, that's what I'm going to. That's Nick, what I'm going to Nick, refer no. to it as. Nick, do I have to do it again? Nick Morgan. Money. Nick Morgan. I'm kind of curious how you would uh, build a franchise in 2K23. Oh God. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> It would not, just be not, it would just be a team full of no names that don't complain. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. I would I would stay away from KD and LeBron at all costs. They, and you wouldn't win. So in other words, you so in other words, if you selected the Lakers as your franchise, the first thing you would do is put LeBron on the trade block. I would. Because he first of all, LeBron has no value to me now. At what, how old is he? 37? 38? 37. I'd rather have a guy like Giannis than LeBron. At which point, the game's AI would probably say, do you really want to make this trade? Yes. Uh, if, and, then would, if, and then it would say again, do you really, really, really want to make this trade? trade? If a deal... If keep doing it, I said, are you sure you want to make this wait, trade? If, wait, wait, and then, wait, wait, wait. And then you click a fourth time, and guess what? LeBron pops up and actually says, hey, man, are, are you really going to be doing come on, this? Don't do, come oh, on. Wait a, you, minute, really I, gonna wait a minute. I thought you were going to say that it was going to pop up a fourth time and the game was going to explode, but... <laughs> No, but, that's what happens if you yes you say yes the fifth time. LeBron actually makes your game explode. He says, you ain't trading me. All <laughs> right. I, I'm telling you right now, if a deal was offered to me 
where I could get Giannis and I trade LeBron. I'd do it in seconds. I would do it. Giannis is the better player now, not LeBron. See, I, I, I don't know why you spend so much time talking shit about Stephen A. Smith. You essentially are him. No. <laughs> he would want Giannis also. Nick, can but you then say, you just proved my point. No. Nick, can you say stay off the damn weed for me, no. please? No. <laughs> Not a chance. My, my point is... Can, Nick, you go on a, can you go on a rant on Kwame Brown for me, please? Oh, God. The thing is, you, but you're you're running through all the you're running through all these scenarios, and I'm just trying to figure out what planet you're on right now. Hey, because hey, wait a minute, how did this? Wait a minute, time out. time out. How did this conversation go to me when this, we're talking about the Knicks? Because no, 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 we're not talking about the Knicks. We're talking about the Knicks. Yes, <laughs> as in me and you. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my hand off the trigger and not press it. Go ahead. I'll, I'll do it myself. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. All oh, right. Great. Oh, great. Sure. Get you back here. You. All right. We got to right. finish. What, what yeah, else? We, we got to run through these quick. We uh, Freddie Freeman firing his agent, Casey Close. So it's pretty obvious, and <laughs> I, I did a minute about this last week, and it's pretty obvious that Freddie Freeman did not want to leave Atlanta. So, ladies and gentlemen, if this, if it shows, if it seems to be the case that Casey Close did not tell Freddie Freeman that the the Braves were going to up their offer to him to make it seem like the Dodgers were the only ones that wanted him, because he'd get a bigger cut of that. If that's the case, not only is that a breach of fiduciary duty, that's something that basically should blackball you from ever being a sports agent again. All right, I'll give you a choice. Do you want curb or do you want a circus? Because that's what this is right now. I wish you could yes. just stack, yeah, stack them on top of each other. Oh uh, no, which one do you want? Yes, yes. Just pick one. Yes. All yes. right, fine. Now the reason I say it's either a circus or a, or a curb is that. One, if Casey Close is hiding money from his client, what are you doing? That You're costing yourself money as an plus agent. The, plus, the, that's embezzlement, and that's also a white-collar crime. Well, I don't know if it's embezzlement. We can't yeah, say that. I don't that. know if it is embezzlement, but I think we also have to be careful what we say, too, because Casey Close and his group have actually fully – have made a statement insinuating that he has done nothing wrong. He did nothing on in fiduciary. What did, what did you call it, Nick, again? A breach of fiduciary. fiduciary. A brief of fiduciary. Oh, theory. Actually, isn't the phrase fiduciary responsibility? I think. I think but, basically, no, but basically, he says that, uh, that basically there's a false narrative going around. And it was ESPN who wrote the article, right? I think yeah. so. He, By the uh, way, he, no, I'm saying because Casey Close is saying that he and his team are exploring all legal options and may sue ESPN for. Of um, course, the reasoning, and this is like any other agent who's a quack. Most agents are quacks. Let me see, BS, BS to be at the top of the list. Okay, we're talking about an agent who's trying to protect his own ass. He doesn't care about his. Uh, what is it? Excel management, I think, is the name of the agent. Yeah, Excel. 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 Sports management. So he doesn't care about the company. He doesn't care about Freddie Freeman. He cares about his own ass. That's it. He doesn't care. And I think Doug Gottlieb was one of the first to break the story. He, he threatened. Yeah, he's the one being sued. He was the one. He's, he's threatening to sue Doug Gottlieb to save his own ass. Which I mean, am I? I might be the only one who thinks so, but. I kind of do feel bad for Freddie Freeman if he really did not want to leave. It seemed like it seemed like I will say watching the footage of him being emotional as he is there in Atlanta, I think he kind of misses it. He really misses it. Okay, but can I say one thing and I'm sure I'm going to get tomatoes thrown at me by Braves fans. Who signed their name on the dotted line? Yes, technically you're right, but if he never knew but the reporters I mean, he never knew about that last. Yeah, if he never knew that last offer. Okay, well, why didn't he go to the like, Braves? It's like, it's like finding out. Because Nick, 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 
no, because sorry to interrupt, but Nick said a question. He said, if, "Then why didn't you just go to the Braves? Because then why do you have an agent?" Some yeah, the agent is supposed to do that work. I have to remind you of the A Rod situation when they were trying to renegotiate the deal, and he basically kicked Scott Boris to the curb. Well, that's because A Rod's A Rod. I mean, but but that's no, he wanted to resign with the Yankees. But that's what agents on paper are supposed to do: represent the client. But to, to me, this is like finding out that you know your your ex fiance marries someone else. And then you realize six months after the six months after the wedding day, oh, she didn't hate you. She loved you all along, and only went through only went through with it because she didn't because you yeah, missed text from her or something. It's like a bad romantic comedy. I don't agree. I think that that's a whole different life situation because kids and other things could be involved. That's a life responsibility. This is all about money and about picking a career and where you want to play as an individual, which very many people get the rare opportunity to make hundreds of millions of dollars playing a sport. I, I, I don't know. There, there is something about this that just does not strike me as there's some, there's something up with this. There is something up with this. Cause I'm no, I'm just saying that the timing seems all it's, it's the timing of everything. But why did it come out though? Oh, but why did it come out after the fact when he signed the contract? That's what I don't get. Because th the allegation is he didn't know about that last Braves mm -hmm. offer. But In what does words. Casey Close have to gain by keeping the offer away from his client? He has nothing to gain. He would get a bigger cut if he um, uh, if he signed with the Dodgers, no? They're saying that apparently it was a competitive offer from the Braves. So he's actually effing himself up if he didn't get, if supposedly he didn't give the contract offer to Freddie Freeman. So th there's nothing to gain here by Casey Close. I don't know. I, I yeah, I, I really don't know. The story the story has me. I was confused when I first heard about this story, and I'm still confused. If yeah. if it's proven that Casey Close did uh, bar his fiduciary responsibility, he needs to be thrown out of the sport. Again, if if you can prove it, so well, let's see. Again, if, you, if. And if you can't, ESPN's in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Well, a lot of times, I have to give credit to ESPN on one thing. Their investigative stories are usually on point. Very. They're very good. So it's going to be tough. Like if they, their, their investigative team is probably one of the, is at the top of the game when it comes to proving stories. Now, I don't know. Casey Close was uh, Derek Jeter's agent at one point, wasn't he? Yeah, and Derek Jeter yes, actually came out in defense of Casey Close, saying Casey would never do such a thing. Yeah, that, well, I would never defend an agent. That's a tough spot to be in, especially when you're not playing anymore. I don't mm -hmm. think he's the agent anymore for Derek. I think that was no. in the past. I, but I don't know. That That's a tough spot to be in. Yeah, and it's something. There's something up with this story. I just, I, again, I was confused by it before, and I still am. The one, uh, last, I just want to say one last thing, and then we can move. If he had an issue, say there was something going on in his head where he said something's not right. Uh, I, I'm having concerns. Why did you sign the contract? Maybe because he just saw <laughs> the better opportunity. I mean, now let's face it. I, I still think to the, to this day, I still think what I thought at the start of the season. Both the Dodgers and the Braves are going to make the NLCS. So that's going to be a really interesting storyline if that were to come to happen. It just tells me, though, it's suspicious that he fired his agent and he fired the agency, and now he's listed as self-representing. That tells you that something's not right. Yeah, definitely. All right, quickly, we do have another big story, one that's starting to develop. So Michael Balco, you might remember him last week as mentioning the Seahawks. He had made the... There was a story that had come out from Balco earlier this week now that a new team supposedly has entered the Baker Mayfield sweepstakes that may have stopped negotiations between the Browns and the Seahawks. Now, today, I mean, uh, just the other day, Ian Rappaport announces in his latest report that the Seahawks were never really interested in Mayfield, which I have a hard time believing. Because... Wow. I No, 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 because... I understand maybe the Seahawks may not want to – again, maybe Baker isn't exactly the greatest, you know, pers person in terms of persona. But if you're, you're actually telling me 
yeah, the Seahawks, you were actually telling me you would rather go with Drew Locke and Geno Smith over Baker Mayfield. When you have DK Metcalf, uh, Tyler Lockett, and Chris Carson, are, you're kidding me. Well, well, apparently with trade rumors, supposedly with DJ Metcalf also. I mean, DJ Metcalf I... that might go to the Browns or he might go to the Cowboys. My, no, my point is if you're not looking to upgrade your quarterback position and you're fine with Drew Locke, you may as well burn the mother effort to the ground. You, you, you might as well, but because all this seems to me, I mean, you know, get me a straw hat and a pair of suspenders with no shirt. Because I can, oh, you can open up a vineyard with all these sour grapes. <laughs> <laughs> and, but now, as a far, well, I threw a little question to Nick Morgan in a pre-show meeting before you actually got there that day, Nick Fadero. This little new team report from Valco. You know where I'm going with this, the theory I presented to you, Nick Ferguson. Could you think maybe that the Browns leaked that report in order to try and get something more from the Seahawks or the Panthers? Um, it makes sense. So they're basically going to play themselves. That's what you're saying. You think a team might get desperate, though? I, I, if I'm the Seahawks, I'd be desperate for a quarterback right now. Wouldn't that be committing tampering on themselves? Hey, I <laughs> just, I, that, that, thought just, that thought just popped into my head. I was just like, wait a minute. Wouldn't that technically be committing tampering on themselves? I mean, if you tamper with yourself, you will go blind, but still. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ugh. I don't know. The, it, Baker is fucked. Let's put it that way. Like, if the Seahawks don't want you, then. Uh, <laughs> but again, uh, but again, you know, again, maybe if Deshaun gets suspended, maybe the Browns will throw more money at Baker to just play for them in the in the interim. Although there are the reports that supposedly maybe Deshaun will only get eight games because they, they might lean more towards the players side. There's Robin Sue Robinson in that uh little arbitration. Here, I mean, that suspension arbitration hearing, whatever it's called. There's yeah. reports. Florio actually threw out a weird suggestion that maybe it'll be a retroactive suspension and he'll get half of this season and then the rest will be considered <laughs> retroactive. If it's retroactive, there are going to be riots all over the place. You know what? I take what Mike Florio says with a grain of salt <laughs> anyway. No, and, I, and I'll tell you why it's bad. Because, guys, if you remember... He didn't sit out last season technically because of the cases. He sat last season out on the bench because he was having issues with the Texans. Issues that stemmed back from when the Texans had Bill O'Brien and B.O.B. traded away DeAndre. Good Lord. Bill. Ah, yes. Remember but, you know that one? <laughs> but you know what, though? I was going to make this reference before. It's going to be very odd. But Baker Mayfield kind of reminds me of the Mr. Owl and the Tootsie Roll commercial, where basically it's how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? It's how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Baker Mayfield trade? <laughs> how many trades does it take to, does it take to get to a good team? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, twelve, fifteen, thirty-five, seventy-four. A lot. Wait a minute. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the world may never know. So so what you have essentially done is you've essentially played commissioner in Madden NFL and franchise mode, and you've just essentially flipped Baker Mayfield around 74 times in the span of a week. Pretty much. And you know what? I, I don't know. I wouldn't even flip him for a Tootsie Pop anyway. That's a little harsh. It depends. The chocolate ones. Yeah. Okay. Well... All right, I'll leave that one. I'll let that one be. <sighs> All right. A uh, couple more stories. Just go. Justin Thomas uh, saying he wants LIV golfers to, I know, I had to put the quote there, have, the, have balls, the balls, have the cojones to say that they joined for the money. So, I mean, openly openly questioning the fact whether they have pelotas or not is just, uh, see, I mean, I applaud, I, I applaud the honesty, because bravo, really. 
because because that's what this is. Oh, he's not part of LIV. He's saying he wants the LIV players to have. Well, the- someone, that's that's, someone did that's why I say. Uh, by the way, by the way, I'm going to say something that Nick usually says. If he's going to make this statement, we better not find out in a week or two weeks' time that he was offered two hundred million dollars and then he jumped ship. I better not hear that because I like, will. Would you like to own your own remote island chain in Micronesia? Because I will, I will call the shit out of him if we find out in a week or two weeks' time. Oh, I was offered two hundred million dollars and I jumped to the LIV tour. Well, well, in, in fairness, somebody you said Nick, somebody can say, okay, I did join for the money. Bryson DeChambeau, he he was just offered one hundred twenty-five million dollars, most of it up front. At least I gotta, like Nick was saying, I gotta applaud him because he had the, as Vince McMahon would say, grapefruits. <laughs> yeah, but but I wouldn't say he did anything. All he's saying is that the LIV golfers need to have the balls to say it. He he didn't do anything, right? And well, Bryson, no, but I'm saying Bryson G. Champ. Oh, proved his point and said, okay, yes. But the thing is, a lot of this, you know, golf has been for so long, you know, cloaked in an uh, cloaked in a sort of false nobility, meaning that we're not like the other sports. We, we're, we're doing this for the love of the game. And, no, they're not. And, uh, but again, that that's the perception. It's, it's been not the reality. Yeah, that's what Nick, is, Nick Morrison, that's what Nick Federer is saying, that it's been, that's been the cloak. It's been on the, the appearance. The, under the surface, however. Under the surface, however, it's just as avaricious and cynical as any other North America, uh, any other sport, to be honest. I mean, with. do I have to go back to the point that Tiger Woods was reportedly offered seven hundred and fifty million dollars by the LIV. Three tour. quarters of a billion dollars, and he turned it away, saying that he has integrity, which, by the way, is laughable because he has no integrity. I mean, he lost that around what, what like two thousand ten or something, two two thousand ten or so. But, but I mean, at a certain point, ladies and gentlemen, we really need to stop believing that every other because we live in a capitalistic society. People do things because they like money. Money. Well, first as, of all, as Ted DiBiase once said, everybody's got a price. Everybody's got a price. Money talks and bullshit rides the bus. We can de- we 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 do debate on the ethics and the morals of taking money essentially from the Saudi. But if government. we were offered that same money, if we were offered that same money, I mean, there's a lot of people who would, you know, all of a sudden cease to, you know, they get off the high horse. See, what people don't realize, and I don't understand this, why people, I don't understand why people, people are getting mad at the LIV tour because apparently it's got all this uh, foreign blood money, whatever you want to call it. It's competition. It's healthy competition. No, again, it is fair point. It is fair point to say that it is blood money. But like Nick Federer said, I wonder if these people, if how many of them were offered that same blood money would, if no, if they would offer that same blood money, would they jump out? Oh, that, first of all, I mean, as, as professional golfers, they probably don't need they don't need to work a day in their lives. That's anyway. not true. I disagree with you. One of the guys, I can't remember his name, Pat something. He came out like a couple weeks ago and said that he missed a bunch of important days in his life of his kids because he had to go golf because he wasn't making enough money on the PGA Tour. So he had to keep playing. So you're saying that, that LIV is essentially stepping in where the PGA is not. He admitted to saying, I needed the money because I needed to be more comfortable living. Love it. Let me put it to you this way. Let me, maybe this might do it. Nick Morgan, tell me if um, if it's a good comparison to make to Nick Fader or not. LIV is basically being the late 90s WCW to the WWF. Yeah, I could see that. More money, less dates, more guaranteed money. Well, that's for anything. I mean, when you look at all the different leagues, like I'm surprised you don't see a competitor to the NBA or to MLB. Well, actually- MLB, MLB has the antitrust. Right, but what is but it? it? It's the phony it's purity. Not a competition. It's the phony purity that, that, that pisses me off here. Because Which one? Yes, yeah, but, but it's the phony purity that, that you see – Golfers, you know, what's the thing? phony purity? They're a they're a competitive golf league that's offering more money than the PJ needs to get on its high horse and compete. That's exactly, but that's exactly what I'm saying. 
and at the end of the day, this might just be a good thing where, where it forces the PGA to either shit or get off the pot and pay their players more. I mean, I, first of all, Jay Maybe Monahan. I'm being a little bit too optimistic for my own good. Jay, Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA, basically came down and tried to use the excuse of, well, they are they were the people who were getting 9-11 and all this BS. That's your excuse? That's what you're telling golfers because of 9-11? You're telling them that that's why they shouldn't go out and take better money or a business decision? It's a bad, but still, it is a bad look. All right. It is a bad I, look. I, I just want to end end this uh, segment before we get into our last story here. You did mention uh, competition, and there should be competition for all the major sports leagues. I mentioned MLB has the uh, antitrust. Well, um... <laughs> you know where this is going. <laughs> you know where this is going. <laughs> the NBA. <laughs> Just like golf in every distinguishable way, yet we get to hit each other with the clubs. <laughs> that would be fun, I actually. If we could hit somebody in the nuts. Do you imagine if you actually had uh on the LIV tour where like, if you beat someone down the end of the course, like they would get a penalty stroke to the other person. Yeah. Pen strokes I, off your game. If you have, it depends on how many golf balls you can fit in your mouth at one time. Oh, yeah. oh, ew. Like, kind of appropriate. Maybe Vince McMahon would do something with the LIV because Vince also has a deal of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. He's also. <laughs> up well, the government. so if there's one thing he knows about blood money, Definitely talk to Vince McMahon. Well, speaking of what Nick said, shoving stuff in your mouth. I think that's okay, a perfect... last, uh, last story. Nathan's hot dog eating contest. So Joey Chestnut comes in. He actually ha uh, has a tendon injury. So he, you saw him all day on crutches. Doesn't affect his eating, though. 63 hot dogs and buns. Well, maybe it did. Because <laughs> all the leaning... <laughs> I mean, all the leaning that he had to do. Maybe kind of was dealing with the pain a little bit. Uh, but that didn't stop him, however, from taking out a protester. You saw these two guys in Star Wars masks. One. Uh, yeah. No, there were two. One there guy two. dressed up as a stormtrooper. The other one had a Star Wars t-shirt on. Oh, I thought only one made it up, though, towards him. Well, only one of them made it up. The other no, one one, the other one was in the back. The other, the other one was one in, was the, in back. the back. Oh, the, other one had, the other one had the cojones to go up to Joey <laughs> Chestnut. <laughs> And put out that sign about the Death Star. The 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 Smithfield Death Star. I don't. It has something to do with food processing. And it has either. something to do with food processing, but it's probably it's probably some tinfoil hat bullshit about Morlocks and wicker people and and and, and, and Joey your Chestnut. Fluids. And Joey Chestnut wraps his arm around the guy, like effectively choking him, and tosses him to the ground and continues to eat. That is a WCW worthy choke slam. I, I, I feel just like found I it. Years old watching the uh, watching the giant. It says expose Mythfield's Death Star. Is it Mythfield or Smithfield? Smithfield. Oh, he's he's covering it with his hands. Okay, oh, Smithfield. No, Smithfield. But but still, I don't want to know. I don't know. I don't want to know what the fuck that is. Because <laughs> it probably has something to do with it with alien cows or or, or, some, or some such other bullshit. But thing. you know what though, Jewish I'm, space lasers or some nonsense. I wish, I wish he had knocked him out completely. Yeah, I mean, it definitely would have made for a good ending. Well, it did. That whole moment went viral. Because but because essentially, I mean, you're not even tasting what you're putting in your mouth, so. What the eaters, fun in that? Competitive eaters or something else, man. Joey Chestnut is inhuman with what I he mean. I mean, seriously, you, you're you're going so fast you can barely even taste the hog anus. Oh God! <laughs> what? I was just gonna say we ended on a good. I just I was just gonna say we had a good ending, and then you have to throw that in there. <laughs> what hog anus is in hot dogs? You said you didn't want to know how the sausage was made. All right, enough. This episode is over. I'm throwing you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On, we got to bring him back in to end the episode. Come on. Okay, fine. This episode uh, has been sponsored by Nathan's. <laughs> no, this this episode has been sponsored by Knack. Nah. Go check out our, our product for Knack. That's the old one, which is a good product, by the way. But we have the Knack sling bag. Make sure you go on to our... Uh, our link below in the in the description and get free shipping. Please go enjoy the product. We should have it in a few weeks so you can actually see what it looks like in person. Also, and, uh, make, 
sorry, no, no. Also, make sure to like the episode. Make sure to follow us across the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at ETB Sports. For the network, it's at ETB Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And by the way, a few more announcements as well. This is weird. We're actually saying goodbye to our, our logo this week. We are yeah. actually saying goodbye. So this, how long have we had this logo for? Uh, a couple of years ago, my uncle made it for us. Yeah. Holy crap. Okay, so we're, we have so, a, well, since the beginning. Since the beginning. Since the beginning of Empty the Bench. So yeah. we have a new logo coming in. We I dropped it a little bit, so it's on our social medias. If you go check that out. Also, some show announcements as well. We have a new MMA show. Hey. So you want to say what that is, Tom? Okay, it'll be myself and Zambando and Zambando, uh, the MMA Outsiders debuting on July 27th. We'll give reviews and previews of all the big uh, cards in the UFC and other MMA promotions out there. We'll do interviews. We'll ha maybe have some guests on from around the MMA media as well. So please check us out. I can't wait for it. It's going to be fun. I know we tried to explore this uh, a year ago. I think you trying to do a show. It just the scheduling was a little bit out there. Also, some other shows as well. There's a show called Fruity Cereal. Yes, let Nick's mind wander about the name of that title of uh, that show. And no, it's not the cereal you eat, by the way. It's Fruity Cereal, S-E-R-I-A-L. So make sure you go check that show out as well. And there's a smattering of others along the way as well. So and make sure you check it out. And don't forget to follow us on our personal social medias. You see those scrolling across the bottom. Oh, but other than that, on Tom Vallow, that's Nick Federer and Nick Morgison. And we'll see you next week for episode 143 of Empty the Bench. Take care, everybody. Good night, everybody! Good night, everybody. <laughs>